Hi, my name is Leon Dupassi. I'm in Sangamay, Malawi, on uh, the lake shore. We uh, live in a small lodge. Uh, we have a lot of uh, foreign guests coming around. Um, and yeah, talking, we want to talk about a bit about malaria. We have four strains of malaria in uh, this area. Malaria is the biggest killer in Africa. People think it's HIV AIDS, but uh, surprise, surprise, malaria. Um, the one strain, Faltiparum, which is the most dangerous, uh, they reckon kill about 3,000 kids a day in Africa. Um, so yeah, if, uh, if you ever um, want to get involved in anything, try and uh, sort out malaria for us. Beautiful. Okay, next thing. Um, say, let's talk about your lodge and your scuba diving. Go. Uh, we run a small lodge on the lake shore. Um, we have uh, a whole lot of different types of water sports here. We do water skiing, tube riding, parasailing, and then we also have paddy dive uh, center. So we do a bit of dive training and we take our people for experiences on the lake, which is unique. It's uh, fresh water, altitude, uh, tropical dive all in one, which I believe is, is only available in Central Africa. So if you want a nice warm water dive at altitude, this is the place to do it. And talk about the animals, excursions you have to the hippos and alligators? Uh, we do also we also do a lot of boat trips uh, to places in the vicinity. We've got a hippo pool where you can view some, some of our local hippos and crocodiles in the wild. We've also got a crocodile farm where there's about 14,000 crocs. Um, the old male, breeding male, is about 50 years old, massive 20 foot uh, Nile crocodile. Um, then we've got a fish farm in the area. Uh, the fish farm is, um, is uh, Malawi shiklets, which is uh, exported all over the world for tropical fish tanks. Um, they do a bit of breeding, but a lot of it's still caught in the wild and then packaged and sent out by airplane. Beautiful. Um, one really important thing, Leon, uh, the, and one of the most important things I'd like to ask you about, I know that you're Christian. If you could start off and say, tell us about uh, the Christians here in Malawi or about your personal experiences of being a Christian in Malawi. Can we talk about that? Sure. Do you mind? Okay, so start off saying, I am a Christian here, and if you want anything that you want to say, I want to share this. Hmm. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm um, very outnumbered in the area where we stay. There's about an 85% uh, Muslim community in, in our area, uh, which dates back to the Muslim slave trading days. Uh, this was a major slave trading center. Uh, so as Christians, we, we have our work cut out in the area. Um, people are very, very uh, religious in terms of their, their different faiths. So to convince anybody of your own faith, um, I think there's only one way to do that, and that's by the way you live. Um, if they can see an example um, of the way you live, then they might consider uh, why you are, who you are, and, and what you are, and that way it's not getting interested in, in your faith. Um, we have a very nice little mission, uh, Christian mission, just down the beach, um, with a wonderful couple and their small kids uh, manning it. Uh, they do training of pastors, they train local guys up to be, be our future pastors to bring the word out. So as a Christian community, a couple of very dedicated Christians, like I said, outnumbered, but we're a, a little band of brothers. Can you tell us about the, the story of the pastor you said that almost died of malaria? Uh, yeah, that was only a few days ago. He picked up malaria, um, picked up um, falciparum, which is the dangerous one, and the medication that we normally uh, prescribe for malaria, he was uh, resistant to that, or the, the strain of malaria is resistant uh, to that specific uh, medication, which seems to be happening more and more often, um, in which case um, your treatment needs to be changed back to the olden days when we used um, the reading of oh, gosh, are you going to okay. cut this okay. out? That's right. um, what's it called? Uh, no, it's okay, you can move on from there. You know, uh, but no, I need to get the name. Quinine, quinine, quinine. Oh, there, there we go. Uh, quinine used to be uh, the old method of treating malaria. Um, and in the cases where, where the strain is resistant to modern medicines, uh, that's still the, 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 the fallback medicine that we, used to, we have to go to. Quinine is not a very pleasant medicine. It makes you very uh, queasy and uh, affects your hearing and makes you feel even more ill. 
the, I mean, the malaria makes you, but uh, that's uh, in a lot of cases the only thing that can save your life. Okay. And the last thing, Leon, if you could please share with us and the world, could you tell us you said something about Sangha is uh, old history about uh, the slave trade or something? Yeah, it, goes, it dates back to the 1400s when the Muslim tra slave traders came into Africa. This was a, uh, a point where they gathered uh, big groups of slaves, um, transported them across the lake and from there to the ocean where they were put on the dowels back then and transported up to the Middle East. So, yeah, Senga Bay and Salima. Salima is the, the actual slave trading post, which is our main center in the area. And how do you like it living here so far? A uh, little piece of paradise. Um, lovely. It's, uh, every day I look around me, I think, where's my friends today? Are they, where are they stuck in traffic? Um, uh, you know, are they sitting in a, in a bland office um, in a stuffy suit? And I'm, I'm uh, enjoying another day in my office. So you won't be going back to South Africa? Not, not, quite, uh, not quite at the moment, but... Leon, I want to thank you so much for your time. That's an amazing amount of information right there. And uh, we truly wish you all the best, peace and love, and God bless. And we're going to now cut for now and enjoy the lovely day. You, you ready to join us? Absolutely. Enjoy. All right. Did you touch on, um, uh, on. the... One other thing. Uh, one of the things that uh, a lot of people come here are inquiring about is Belagia. Um, Belagia is definitely um, a factor. Uh, although in Senga Bay not so much because our water is very, um, a lot of movement in the water um, and Belagia likes stiller waters where they infect a, a snail. Um, but it's always a good idea if you go to any place where there's a remote possibility of Belagia being present to when you get back or as soon as possible go on a course of medication. If you don't have Belagia, there's no side effects, but if you do have it, um, it will treat the, 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 the disease. So my suggestion to my guests whenever um, I have the opportunity to talk to them about it is take the medication. It's not no skin off your nose, it's not too expensive, it's a one day course of medication so it's not even hard to do and it will save you a lot of grief in the future. Uh, Bellagia is a, it's basically a snail that uh, infects the body, it, it enters, it can enter through the skin, so there's no real protection for it, you can't uh, be preventative as far as Bellagia is concerned, and it will infect uh, all your different organs, it will go and sit and lie sometimes, uh, or mostly in the bladder, it will start off there and reproduce, and, um, and eventually it can make you very ill. First symptoms are normally um, tiredness, um, listlessness, not wanting to um, to do anything, just lying around, um, and yeah, uh, it's misdiagnosed all because a lot of people come to Africa, go back to their, their home countries where Bellagia doesn't occur, and doctors there won't uh, won't suspect Bellagia, and that will be one of the last things they test for. Um, so if you do come from an area where there is a possibility, a good idea is just take the medication, like I said. Um, better safe than sorry. One last question, uh, Leon. Is Bellagia only here in Malawi or all throughout Africa? Throughout Africa. <laughs> throughout. It's definitely throughout Africa. So, yeah, if, and, and it's not just Africa, there's a lot of other countries where it also. Could, Which ones? Uh, Do mostly you know? tropical countries. So, if wow. you go to, to most tropical countries, there's a, a risk of, of Bellagia being present. So it's always a good idea to take the medication when you return. Um, it can take many years before it really manifests. It can take six months to five years, ten years. Um, so you won't know it's there um, until you start feeling ill. And when you do start feeling ill, um, a lot of other things will be suspected. Um, the larger will be the last of it. Especially if you have, uh, haven't been to an infected area for ten years, and all of a sudden you start getting symptoms, people won't think of the possibility of it being the larger. Thank you again, Leon, for your time. You're an amazing person, and we feel lucky to be able to capture this interview with you. My pleasure. This is not going to be long. It's probably maybe five minutes or so. If it okay. goes over, it's okay. I'm in Senga Beach at this lovely resort with Lake Malawi right behind me, and I feel so lucky and privileged to share with you. I just, it just somehow things keep coming to me. It's an amazing stories again. But I'm here with another local Christian pastor, and he has a couple things to share with the world. I'm here to give it to you, and I feel lucky to be able to do this again. Pastor, thank you for your time. It's my pleasure. It's absolutely lovely. If you could, this number one first question, 
start off and say what kind of Christian you are and what is your name? Yes, I'm um, John Matthew. Um, we're from South Africa. We've been uh, mission pastors in Malawi now since the end of January. In Africa, we've been about two years now. The, the previous two years, we've been in Zambia. Um, oh, wow. We're working there in, in the mission field. And uh, it went very well. It's, it's exciting. You never s stop seeing the hand of God moving. Oh, it's I'd amazing. Hear that. It's uh, my friend from somebody that wasn't able to walk for, for two years because of three back operations. Next day, walking cat, one to piece of charcoal up to small child giving his heart to God. It's just amazing. So there's a lot of Christians in Zambia also. Yes. We are heading there next, so that's yes. a whole nother segment. Yes. Pastor, if you could tell us what is happening here with the Christians here at Lake Malawi in this particular area. Sure. Yeah. At Lake Malawi, it's actually very difficult at this stage because Lake Malawi is more an Islam community than it is a Christian community. So we, we have been fortunate to be able to get a piece of property in the middle of, the, of a small Islam community. And for that, just for that to happen, it's a miracle no, because they don't allow any Christians within them. Oh, really? Yeah, no, 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 no. That, is, that, that doesn't happen. That's not allowed. So the first three months was hectic. You've got the eye, you've got the feelings, you've got all the attentions from you're not welcome. Oh, but, really? now, but now through lifestyle, through, through building relations by helping the community, doing projects, doing small things, they are just opening up. And even uh, the other day, another Islam lady came and gave her heart to Christ. So that's, that's amazing, my friend. Is it dangerous to, to be a Christian here and to talk about Christianity with the Muslims more predominant here? No, because God gives us wisdom. God just gives us wisdom. You can't just walk in and say, yeah, this is the Bible, accept it. No, you can't do it. You have to come in neutral. As, as, as no, you can't keep coming in as neutral because they're not a Christian. Oh, okay. You have to come in as a God-fearing man or woman, coming in and saying, this is what I believe. This is why I believe it. And if you agree with me, let's talk about it. If you don't agree, let's talk about why we disagree to agree. So. It's, it's amazing. It just takes time to build that relationship and trust. And as soon as you have that, they start listening. Um, the Islam is not a very radical Islam that is here. Um, it's a very, it's very, my father was Islam and my grandfather was Islam. That's why I'm Islam. So there's lots of scope. We went on a, on a short crusade the other day. We saw about 1,000, 1,800 people altogether. And four, 400 of those people gave their life to Christ from the age of 6 up to 54. And that was, that was something wow, that was just something to see. Just using small material like the Jesus movie, the evangelist, Mr. the cube, um, the living ball, all different tools that you use just to get their attention, get their trust, and then you just keep the gospel and you go from there. I love it. You know, there's so many things that I want to talk to you know about, and our time is so limited. Yes. The most important question I'd like to ask you right now, like the grand finale, is if you could share with the world what, if you knew the world was watching you right now as a Christian, what would you tell them? God says that we have to have a balance in our life. Not only live it, but we have to preach it as well. Never compromise on that. Stick to that. That's what a Christian is all about. Thank you. Isn't it amazing? I'm very touched. It's kind of an emotional thing to hear this right now. We're going to be moving on to other countries and other villages showing you what the Christian life here in Eastern Africa is all about. It's my deepest pleasure to give you that information. So stay tuned because there's a lot more coming. God bless. And with just priest shake or hug or whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, brother. Okay. All the bless. Sure. Thank Blessings. You. Okay. Bye-bye. Go. And just one last thing I would like to request is the field is always looking for more volunteers, more missionaries, more people that want to give their time to God. Even if it's just one month, two months, three months, a year, please contact us and come and come help. There's more than enough place. There's a volunteer pro program starting now. If you want to get involved, contact us. Please don't hesitate. There's room for any type. If you're a computer wizard, if you are a cook, if you are somebody that wants to get involved in missions or past, or you don't know what you want to do yet, 
come out. Come spend that gap time with us and just come see what God has installed for you. Have a meeting with God. Thank you, my friends. Is there a website to contact or anything? Yes, you can go to www.zehandi.co.za. Um, Zehandi is spelled Z-E-H-A-N-D-I. Or you can write me an email, um, zehandi at gmail.com. Thank you.